1987, Transformers, the Headmasters, released for the Famicom Disk System in Japan uh, this week in history. So... In 1986, the mystery of Convoy, or Convoy, depending on the translation, was released, and it was a hot mess. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible game. You've probably played it, and we've talked about it. But uh, the Headmasters is, um, it's a little better. It's still not, it's not good, but it's a little better. Uh, and it, uh, the, the disc system was... It was intended, basically, to, so that you could have like programmable games and savable games, uh, which Nintendo basically later on uh, said, "Well, screw that." And, and definitely in the U.S., just released battery backup instead of forcing you to have a floppy disk. But uh, the game itself, uh, like I said, isn't bad. John, you've played it, I think, right? Or have you not? Yeah, I've played it. It's okay. It's all right. It's not terrible. It's not like historically bad, like uh, Mystery no. of Convoy. Yeah. No, no, kind of by like that same note though. It's also I wouldn't consider like a must play. No, like, no. It's a, it's on your checklist of games to play, but it's not something like it's not like an experience good or bad it, that you really need. It's to on your add. checklist of Transformers games to play. Right. If you don't either collect Famicom disc games or uh Transformers games, I'd probably skip it. Rob, have, have you played it? Yeah, it's been a long time, but I do remember it at least better being better than Mystery of Convoy. I always wanted the uh, Famicom Disk System. Never got one. That's one of the uh, one of the consoles that I've never had. Never actually had a physical Famicom. But um, still, eventually, I might get one. And if I do, I'll definitely pick up a copy of this and like a pack of rubber bands so that you can actually <laughs> play it. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. You know, I found myself at my work describing to a a guy in his early 20s who hasn't been with our company very long, <clears throat> trying to explain to him, and I felt like a thousand years old, the, the unique experience of buying games that had instruction manuals that, were, that had artwork and more than like four pages and a physical copy of your game. And I might as well have been like grandpa sitting the kids down by the campfire and explaining. So you know. I bought my first physical game that wasn't like a five below copy for the first time, like two weeks ago, uh, or that wasn't used and just like the, the game disc or the game, um, cartridge. I got a copy of uh, a link between worlds for the three DS, which was my second three DS game in four years. Uh, <laughs> but it, it didn't have a manual and I was shocked. It had like, uh, yeah, the war, it had like the, uh, like a four page leaflet on like safety and apparently the manuals <laughs> on the disc. Like government required literature. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, speaking of the speaking of the artwork and stuff, guys, I I don't remember where I saw it, but I did see someone was going to make a book that was it was it was an art book that was all of the old eight bit game boxes. All of them. Or well, 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 I think I think it was for Nintendo. But but it basically it'd be a, it'd be a coffee table book of the box of the boxes all the games used to come. Sadly, in. I would buy that. Oh God, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Like one of my prized possessions is that uh, official Nintendo guidebook that came packaged with the NES back in '87. Um, I, I still pull that out and look at it. Um, love that book. Just looking at pictures of games that I've played a thousand times or bought and never played. Love that book. 